In this video, I'm going to walk through the entire process from start to finish of applying for the CRCST through HSPA, scheduling the exam with Prometric, studying for the exam, and taking the actual CRCST exam at a Prometric testing center. Hey, sterile processing professionals, Brandon the Sterile Guy here, and this video is a special one. A few weeks ago, I was pondering if I should go back and get my certifications renewed. And as I thought about it some more, I thought not only could I create a helpful video from start to finish of how the process works, but also get an idea of what the current CRCST exam is like in first person. And this could help inform my practice exams and flashcards to ensure they're still on point for the most current CRCST exams. Even though all the continuous five-star reviews consistently tell me it is, but still, I wanted to know for myself. Before we jump in, please consider subscribing to the channel so you're always up to date with the latest sterile processing info. And if you're feeling generous, consider giving the video a like. I do believe I am your go-to SPD guy. Let's start with applying for the CRCST exam. This process can take a while to get your application through and get your test scheduled. So the sooner, the better. Plus, having this started generally creates some extrinsic motivation to begin your studying more rigorously. Let's go ahead and jump onto myhspa.org to get started. From here, we are going to click the Get Certified button. This page breaks down general certification information for all the exams but today we will be selecting the CRCST. As we scroll down, we can see eligibility requirements for the full and provisional CRCST. The site provides good links to the exam content outline, resource material, and more. So be sure to check those out. Now we are going to click the online application button. If you already have an account, your login info may already be populated and ready for login. But if not, you can click down here to register a new account. From here, it is a very simple registration process. Once you're signed in, it should take you directly to the exam selection page, which will also list the only certifications you're currently eligible for. And what I mean by that is if you have not obtained the CRCST, the CIS and the CHL will not show up because the CRCST is a requirement for both of those. However, you should be able to see CRCST and the CER because the CER does not have a prerequisite. Since I let all my certifications expire, mine only shows the CRCST and the CER and the vendor certification. But today I will be doing the full CRCST since I have the 400 hours experience all signed off on, which I will show you shortly. This is the form your supervisor or manager will need to complete for you to apply for the full certification. Very important note here, nothing on this page can be filled out by you. All fields must have the same person's handwriting, which should be the supervisor signing off. Let your supervisor completely fill this page. I have the completed form already saved on my computer, so I'm going to upload that now. Now this part is slightly annoying, but you will need to fill in all these blocks, which is basically containing the same information that's on the form itself. I think it is a way to have all the info already entered so they don't have to transcribe it into their system. They can simply verify its accuracy. Once you're done entering all that, click next. This portion is the statement of understanding. Make sure you read and understand what all this is saying concerning exam and the confidentiality around it. If you agree, click the box and then click next. This is the release of information consent if you would like or even need the results to be sent directly to someone other than you. I'm choosing no. Here we review and submit. And you could submit a discount code if you have one, which I've never heard of anyone actually having. And now we put our money where our mouth is and pay the piper. This page is pretty straightforward, asking for your payment info. The cost for your exam is $140. Confirm your info when ready, check the box, and then click the proceed button, which is off screen here down at the bottom right. And just like that, my application is submitted. Now you can actually verify everything went through by going back to your account, which may require you to log back in. Go to my account and then my account homepage. You can click on another my account and then view account history, which should show that payment you just made of $140. You can also go up here to certifications and then click my CE dashboard, then click my applications where you should see that pending application you just submitted. Now, depending on how busy HSPA is, you should soon receive your approval to test letter in your email. 
This email has your eligibility number, which you need to schedule with Prometric. It also states what exam was approved and the dates in which you can take the exam. Here, I have dates between November 13th and March 13th, which is a 120 day window. It gives you some info about having a valid ID and any relevant security updates. But down here is the easy link to get your test scheduled. So let's get that started. Usually that link will bring you to Prometric with all the necessary information to get you set up. But if Prometric asks you for your eligibility number, just grab it from that email. Again, this front page gives you some pertinent info you need to know. When you're ready, click next. This area goes over all the rules and legal stuff around taking the exam at Prometric. If you agree with everything, you can click the check boxes and then click next. But keep in mind, you cannot move forward unless you agree to everything. Now here, we are going to enter your address or zip code to find a testing center near you. You can also enter specific dates or date ranges you're looking at to test. Pay very close attention on this screen. It usually pops up with the closest testing center and then immediately below starts listing the next closest testing centers. If you're not careful, you could end up scheduling in the wrong city. If no good dates show up for you from the date range you selected, you can easily enter new date ranges up at the top. I am good to go for November 19th, so I'm going to select that date. Once you select the date, it will display any open time available for that day. And that's great, 8.30 works perfect for me. I prefer to test first thing in the morning anyways. When you're satisfied with your selection, you can click the continue button at the bottom right. On this page, you'll just verify some data. Now this is the most important page. Verify everything to include your name, location of testing center, date and time, etc. If everything is kosher, you can click continue. If not, there is a back button to fix whatever needs fixing. Once you click continue, you'll get a confirmation screen. You'll also receive an email from Prometric with your appointment confirmation and a whole list of expectations and rules you need to know. So at least glance over those so you're somewhat prepared. What you need to know is your name first and last from your HSPA application needs to exactly match your ID. Okay, that was a lot, but step by step to help you get through that application process. Now let's move on to studying. The HSPA 9th edition manual is key to your studying success. I have linked that in the description for you to get that ordered if you don't have one. Now, I wanna be super clear about what I'm going to say next. Any practice tests and flashcards used to study for the exam are secondary tools. The only primary tool is the HSPA manual. Now, let's talk about how to use practice tests and flashcards. There are two key points you need to know. First, just taking the practice exams and flashcards helps the brain to learn what is known as active recall and the testing effect. With active recall, it is the process of training the brain to recall memories on a regular and more efficient basis. The more you take tests, the easier your memory starts to recall answers over time. With the testing effect, it is the process which provides a challenge to the brain, making learning more concrete. Have you ever been in a competition to learn or do something? the brain goes into a kind of hyperdrive when it is in competition. For most people, a challenge creates extrinsic and intrinsic motivation simultaneously, which is a powerful stimulant to memory gain. Now, I sell practice exams and flashcards designed specifically to help you continually learn the concepts of sterile processing inside and out, as well as assess your strengths and weaknesses in each area of the HSPA manual. When you use the HSPA manual, flashcards, and practice tests all together, you basically guarantee yourself to pass the exam. If you're new to sterile processing or feel that you need some extra studying over and above reading or practice tests, I do have the Sterile Processing 101 certification prep course that walks through the entire manual with video lessons, quizzes, cheat sheets, and more. I try to provide many types of study products to assist with different styles of learning, whether it is reading, listening, practice testing, or flashcards, which can be visual and also be listening if you have someone read them to you. Now, ideally, you should be giving yourself at least six weeks to study before the test and diligently study every day. Now, let's move on to test day. I obviously couldn't film inside the Prometric Testing Center. So I recorded myself prior to going into the test and then directly after, which I'll show you in a minute. With Prometric, the process is easy. When you get there, you need to show a valid and current government issued ID that matches the first and last name on the HSPA application. After verifying your identity and having you read the rules, 
They will provide you with a key to a locker where you'll put all your belongings like your phone, watch, wallet, etc. If you want to be able to drink water in the testing center, make sure you bring a clear water bottle. You can just buy a water bottle and rip off the label. No hydro flasks or anything like that. After you've secured your belongings, you'll move into the station where they'll have you turn your pockets inside out, pull up your sleeves, pull up your pant legs and expose your forearms and ankles, as well as turn your hoodie inside out if you're wearing one. They will also use a wand to check for any other items. Why so much security, you ask? Because keeping the integrity of these tests is very important. If tests are easy to forge, then there would be no respect for them at all. When you pass the test, it is because you have what it takes, not because somehow you cheated. After those security measures, you'll sign in, get your picture taken, and then be provided with some writing materials, which will either be paper and pencils, or maybe like dry erase paper with markers. Then they'll seat you at your station where you'll have a computer, a keyboard, a mouse, and noise canceling headphones. Once you get through the initial instructions, you'll have the opportunity to start the test, which starts the clock countdown from three hours. And once you finish, it will ask you if you want to return to any questions or submit the test. Now there will be a short survey right after asking if you are satisfied with different aspects of the testing process and location, and then you'll get to the screen that you've been waiting for, which is the coveted pass or the dreaded fail. And that is actually it for the testing center. It's easy peasy. Well, the process is easy peasy, not necessarily the test itself. Now, since I just recently took the CRCST, here are a couple videos I took right before my test and then directly after. All right, I'm about to head in and take the CRCST. I am at the Prometric Testing Center building. I'm feeling pretty confident. I still went through all my own practice exams and flashcards, um, just for a refresher, just to be sure. Um, I really want to take the test not only to recertify because it's been a while, but um, just to kind of get an idea of what the newer test feels like. Has it changed from the old ones? Um, kind of get that idea. So I'll let you know how it goes after I'm done. All right, exam is done. It took me about 25 minutes. Um, I've been doing this for 20 plus years. I create the materials to study. I created a program. That's the only reason it doesn't take me a lot of time because I know this stuff inside and out. But as I take the test, I realize that not a lot has changed since I took it before as far as the types of questions. So there's only so much content you can pull from to create these tests. Um, a lot of the questions are pretty straightforward. They just want to figure out, do you understand the concepts behind this um, this um, thing they're asking you? So they might ask you, what are the risks associated with steam sterilization? And then you'll have three answers that are kind of around chemical stuff and then one that's around like thermal and it's like steam sterilization if you know that very well chemical isn't involved it's going to be thermal right so like a thermal burn so it really tests your knowledge it tests um, your critical thinking as far as um, how do you organize um, prioritized items what's the best way to communicate that etc um, i didn't find anything on this test that was worded difficulty um maybe maybe slightly a little bit confusing where you have to read a couple times but nothing that's like oh gosh i have no idea how to interpret this it was just kind of like okay once i reread it i was like okay i understand what they're asking now um you're just you're getting so many questions of so many different subjects that sometimes you have to reread it to get on board with the question to get off of whatever you were on with the last question right so I thought it was really straightforward. Um, it helps renew my faith in my own products, my practice exams, my flashcards, my sterile processing 101 course. They are all specifically designed to pass this exam. As I did my practice um, exams last night, I can see how similar they are. They're not the same. You cannot have the same questions and all that stuff, nor could I. But they are very similar. They ask questions very similar in the same ways and the same concepts. And so I'm very happy that the newer exam um, is very 
um, ready to be taken if you've been using my products. So I highly recommend my practice exams, flashcards, and the Sterile Processing 101 course. Now that I passed the exam, I received my printed certificate about a couple weeks later in the mail from HSPA, along with the handy dandy little CRCST pin. I'm gonna go ahead and get this framed and hang it up somewhere. I'm not sure yet. Yes, I've taken this test several times before, and I know the material inside and out, but it is still an accomplishment nonetheless. And I hope you feel proud of yourself once you pass too, because you deserve it. Passing the CRCST the first time is a huge achievement, so don't take it lightly. Be proud of yourself. So I've just completed my CRCST, and earlier today, I just completed my CHL. And now I'm waiting for my CER, which is scheduled next week. And at the end of the month, I will finish by scheduling the CIS exam. Golden crown, here I come. I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it gave you everything you need to know to get started on your certification journey and maybe even a little motivation to go further than the CRCST. Any topics or videos you wanna see, leave those in the comments down below. Thanks for watching the video and I'll catch you in the next one.